Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, it's my pleasure to introduce Robert Police. Robert got his master's degree at the Technical University of Vienna, where he did mechanistic work on CH activation under the supervision of Professor Michael Snurch. He subsequently completed his PhD at ETH Zurich, where he studied London dispersion and molecular systems under the supervision of Professor Peter Chen. Currently, he's a postdoc at the University of Toronto and the group of Professor Elan Espiruguzic, where he studies machine learning and automation in organic materials and catalysis. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Robert. Thanks for joining us today to talk about your work. Today, I will talk about organic molecules with inverted singlet triplet gaps. Organic light-emitting diodes have become one of the most important screen technologies in recent years. A schematic depiction of an OLED device is shown to the left. They produce light via electric excitation. The emitting layer is sandwiched between the cathode and the anode. When a current is applied between them, the charge carriers travel through the layers and meet at the emitting layer. When the charge carriers meet in the emissive layer, both singlet and triplet excitons are produced in a 1 to 3 ratio due to spin statistics. Initially, they are produced in higher excited states, which, in most molecules, immediately relax via internal conversion to the corresponding first excited states. Depending on the type of emitter, Light production either takes place via fluorescence from the first excited singlet or via phosphorescence from the first excited triplet. The first generation of emissive materials for OLEDs were fluorescent emitters. In these molecules, light production was solely taking place via fluorescence. The triplet excitons were not harvested for light production, limiting the internal quantum efficiency to 25%. To improve upon this technology, phosphorescent emitters were developed. The idea is to rely on phosphorescence for light production and allow the first excited singlets to convert to the first excited triplets via intersystem crossing. To have both a fast intersystem crossing and fast phosphorescence, typical emitters in this class rely on transition metal complexes, in particular iridium complexes. Consequently, internal quantum efficiencies of 100% can be achieved, and these emitters found widespread use in commercial devices. Since transition metals like iridium are expensive, an alternative strategy for efficient emitters was devised that does not rely on phosphorescence but fluorescence, namely thermally activated delayed fluorescence. The underlying idea is minimizing the energy difference between the first excited singlet and triplet states so that thermal excitation can be utilized to convert the first excited triplets to the first excited singlet state. Subsequently, light production takes place via fluorescence, allowing to achieve internal quantum efficiencies of 100%. However, as the first excited triplet is lower in energy than the first excited singlet, significant triplet populations are maintained over a long period of time. Since triplet states are the cause of some of the most important decomposition mechanisms of this type of emitter, they lead to a low long-term device stability. This motivated us to look into an entirely new class of emitters, that is, invest emitters. INVEST stands for Inverted Singlet Triplet Gaps, and it indicates that in these molecules, the first excited singlet state is lower in energy than the corresponding first excited triplet. Consequently, the conversion of triplet to singlet excitons is energetically downhill, which minimizes the triplet population over time and should increase the device lifetime. However, invest molecules are extremely rare 
And all previously known molecules have a low oscillator strength for the electronic transition from the first excited singlet state to the ground state. This makes them very inefficient as light emitters. Recently, two azaphenylenes were studied in great detail and were found to have an inverted singlet triplet gap. It is caused by a combination of two effects. First, HOMO and LUMO have completely disjoint orbitals, leading to a negligible orbital overlap and a very small exchange integral, which directly translates into a very small singlet triplet gap. In addition, the alternating distributions of HOMO and LUMO on adjacent atoms promote spin polarization, stabilizing the first excited singlet state relative to the first excited triplet state, making these molecules have an inverted singlet triplet gap. However, these two molecules are not suitable as organic emitters as their electronic transitions from the first excited singlet to their ground states are strictly symmetry forbidden. Consequently, the oscillator strength of the corresponding transitions is zero. So we asked ourselves, can we find molecules with inverted singlet triplet gaps and appreciable oscillator strengths? To answer these questions, we set up a virtual design-make-test analyze cycle to perform a multi-objective property optimization of the singlet triplet gap and the oscillator strength via quantum chemical calculations. In this workflow, the make and test nodes were performed autonomously by a computer and the design and analyze nodes were performed by a human scientist so this is a human-in-the-loop, closed-loop approach. We started by investigating the properties of all permutations of nitrogen-substituted azaphenylenes, as depicted in the scheme to the left. The corresponding property map is shown to the right. The abscissa represents the singlet-triplet gap, the ordinate shows the oscillator strength. The ideal molecule we're looking for has a negative singlet triplet gap and a high oscillator strength. So the ideal molecule is on the top left corner of this diagram. Four molecules close to the top left corner are marked in red. Their structures are shown in this slide now. As you can see, they all have alternating carbon-nitrogen substitution in the azaphenylen with a varying degree of total nitrogen substitution. Consequently, we were also interested in the effect of substitution of the core structures. Hence, we selected 18 small substituents with diverse electronic effects, including both electron donating and electron withdrawing, as well as substitutions based on the inductive and the mesomeric effect. The corresponding results are depicted in the property map to the right. The first thing to realize is that in this series of molecules, we already find invest molecules with a significantly higher oscillator strength. For us, this was important to see as it suggested that further substitution could improve the property trade-off even further. Hence, we continued our design-make-test-analyze workflow and systematically added more and more substituents to the core structures. The corresponding progress as a function of time is depicted to the right. I would like to emphasize that this plot depicts the actual history of the discovery process. It shows the properties of the molecules visited as we followed the DMTA workflow. The progress of the oscillator strength is shown in red, the progress of the singlet triplet gap is depicted in blue. Let us now look into a few important structures along the optimization trajectory. After initial exploration of the space, we found that installing phenyl groups as in the structure shown leads to an increased oscillator strength 
without affecting the singlet triplet gap. Importantly, this allowed us to install further substitution at the phenyl ring. When we added an N-methyl amine in the ortho position, we found that the oscillator strength increased significantly without compromising too much of the singlet triplet gap. A subsequent introduction of an N-dimethylamine in the para position increased the oscillator strength and even decreased the singlet triplet gap. Afterwards, we explored the space more extensively, improving the property trade-off even further but without big improvements overall. While we were happy with the property trade-off in the best molecules we found, we were unhappy with the structures themselves, as the core azafenylene structure depicted here only has very minimal literature precedence. We could only find one patent from 1975 that ever synthesized a related structure as depicted here. The harsh conditions necessary for the synthesis makes this family of structures hard to work with, and we anticipated that significant synthetic development would be necessary before this family of structures could become interesting for experimental study. Hence, we moved to a different core structure but followed the same general type of substitution pattern to find alternative candidates with somewhat worse but still acceptable property trade-offs. The important advantage of this molecule is that efficient synthesis of the core structure are well established, providing an entry to realize these structures experimentally. The synthesis of some of the best candidates in this family is already underway in our group. To conclude my talk, I showed you that our computational study found molecules with both inverted singlet triplet gaps and appreciable oscillator strength. As mentioned before, synthesis of the most promising candidates is already underway. And finally, we believe that invest emitters will be the next generation of emissive materials for OLED applications. To conclude, I would like to thank Professor Asper Guzik for giving me the opportunity to work in his group, Pascal, Cyril and Gabe for working with me on this project, DARPA, NSERC and the Swiss National Science Foundation for funding and of course you for your attention. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode and thank you to Robert for a very interesting and unique talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast. And feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date and see you all next time.